on it. That was half a liter of energy drinks, so no more complaining from chat side, please. No more hate. I'd appreciate it. Whoa. I can't afford any more energy drink. If anything, then P like just spam Red Bull with messages that they should sponsor me. Even if they just get me like a 20% discount on energy drink, I would be completely fine with that. I mean, legitimately, I spend 120 bucks a month on energy drink. And I'm not gonna quit because I'm freaking addicted to this stuff. But um, more about the game. So... A lot of... A lot of Chinese casting spam. I don't know, I need to be a meme like that as well, but I'm not, like, the only meme behavior I do is, like, slam cans of energy drink every time the chat tells me I'm not hyped enough. Which, to be honest, I also do when not casting, so that's not really a meme for attention or something. And when I yell during teamfights, it's, uh, it's not, like, I don't know, my hyping isn't that high quality, like, LIQUID ARE DOING IT! NO, THEY'RE STILL ALIVE! We all know the ad. We all do. But, um, let's talk about the game more. Uh, in terms of lineup, once again, get, get freaking Pipe or Rito. 30 seconds to battle. This time it's gonna be Nova, who's gonna have to build a pipe. They got an axe, who is a great pipe carrier, though, so get Pipe or Riot. I mean, there's literally no physical damage other than the Enchant Totem and the Vendetta, pretty much. I don't know, I really I really don't know any other way they can get a good deal of physical nukes. Like, there is some pure damage from the Queen of Pain ultimate, but that's not gonna be enough. I mean, Danish Bears, last time around, they played the game in a way that they didn't need a pipe. They learned from their mistake, they saw their... They saw their faults, but, um... Let's see, on the bottom lane, we're actually gonna see a safe lane Monkey King. This is something. I want... I, I'm usually unbiased, don't get me wrong, guys. I never want any team to win because I don't get involved with teams. There's one team where I'm actually the coach and co-manager. Right now, I can't do a lot of coaching because it's... Like, our scrim timing overlaps with Pro Dota Cup, which is kind of shitty, but... um. There's one team playing in the cup where I'm actually coach and co-manager, so... I might be a tiny bit biased towards them, but usually I don't want either team to win. However, this time I think I might have to make an exception, just because... Nova pick a safe lane Monkey King, and if safe lane Monkey King wins... Then Banana Slammer Jammer, like the... Tri uh, the most tryhard Twitch streamer... Like, don't get me wrong, I like the guy a lot, just because... He's honest, like... When something disturbs him, he says it, and I really know how to appreciate that. But the thing is, he said Monkey King safe lane is the worst thing you can do. So if it works, if this Monkey King safe lane is actually going to carry a game, then he'd just be then he'd just be owned, like proven wrong. And I want to see that. I just want to see that so badly because I'm gonna legitimately like make sure he and his chat know. But I'm um, okay. This bottom lane, highly aggressive, a 1 for 1 trade. Monkey King now. Oh my god, the life steal. It's beautiful. This is an art. I mean, I don't want to be biased here, but it's so hard when I know that a tryhard is gonna get di Like, a tryhard is gonna get owned. I don't know. Like, tryharding in a team is fine, tryharding in pups is just. No fun for anyone involved ex except for the Twitch chat, to be honest. 
Okay, we're gonna see Venomancer about to drop down here, but no, one more hit and he would have lived. Now we're gonna see Spacey allow uh, suicide himself. I'm not gonna make any racial or religious references. <laughs> But, yeah, looks like, sadly, the tryhards seem to be right for now. And I just want X to build freaking pipe, like, I don't know. I mean, we all know it's good here. Also, Wind Wyvern, a bit too late with the heal, gets taken down by the Caustic Finale plus the pure bottom tower. pure Sorry, damage from the Chilling Touch. So the kills are going to equal out a little bit. I'm going to switch over to Network actually right now, just because with 8 kills at the 4 minute mark, I don't think it's that educational to look at Tleths and Denies. Usually it is because... Most games for the first 5-10 minutes are fa very favored around this mid matchup. And now that I say that, we're actually for the first time in this game gonna see action on the mid lane. And that action is gonna be Kai dropping down on the mid lane. 2747 and Jasper Hansen, Hasnan. And, um. Yeah. People said they wanted to see 747 play in full form because 747 he's a bit inconsistent as a player but when he plays well he plays really well so I want this bot lane to be won by the Monkey King carry and I want 747 to win his lane and then we're gonna see how the game works out like I think that seems to be the inter the most interesting way this game could go safe lane Monkey King up against up against overfed Queen of Pain I really want to open another can of energy drink, but if I drink any more of that stuff, like, I know I'm a bit addicted to it, and maybe I shouldn't talk about stream because they don't sponsor us just yet. I hope they do someday, just because it would make my life great. Okay, now we get Troll War dropping down. Bam! 747! It looks like he's finally warmed up and ready to go. Meanwhile, Zytrax, farming jungle. I like the safe lane Monkey King build. He didn't even put a, put a single point into Primal Spring. Maybe one value point could have saved his life. At least once. Boom. Venomancer dead. Noya trying to get away. Zytrax is going to go down and Noya manages to get out. So... Greed is being punished from Nova's side here, and Spacey manages to deny himself to the creeps there. That was a really good call. The camp being stacked makes it even easier for him because that actually significantly decreases the delay that creeps attack with by like nearly half a second. It's like 0.3 or 0.4 second. yes. seconds. And um. Alright, has to Joe now on the mid lane, it's gonna go down here, the Fissure being sidestepped by Spacey and he drops. As for the Monkey King's safe lane, he has third in net worth, he got some assist gold there I think. No, he actually didn't, barely out of range, that feels bad man. Also, guess what, Dota listen to me. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who said this, but I kept calling about how disappointing the Bound to Strike was. It didn't even have an icon, it didn't even have a cool effect, and they fixed the Bloody Monkey King staff. Just now that I spent a name tag on naming mine 
the staff of disappointment, and even a, like I bought a name tag and desk tag just to dis valve, and now they fixed the staff. That's actually kind of shitty, but um, troll warlord went down. Good call there. Traded off for the queen of pain. That's actually slightly favored for Nova here. I thought it was the other way around, but assist gold still matters. Rough band mechanic not quite kicking in before the 10 minute mark. But yeah, I went on like three rants about how disappointing the freaking Monkey King staff was, and now all of a sudden it's a great item. Now that I wasted a name tag and a description tag on naming mine, Staff of Disappointment, seriously, with the description, seriously, guy is not even an, not even an icon. Freaking thanks, Volvo. Okay, Monkey King making sure he gets the lifestyle up there. And it looks like Winter Wyvern is gonna get punished for sticking around. One more hit's gonna do it. Spacey will get the last hit there. And now Nova, Nova ever so slightly in favor again. This axe is huge though. Super good blink dagger timing. He can now go for a pipe to render... I mean, four out of five heroes are just gonna be completely worthless, statistically speaking. Like, half of Queen of Pain's damage output, like... Well, not half of her damage output, but half of her tool... Half of her tools don't get mitigated by pipe, like the sonic wave and the blink. The blink... I know the blink itself doesn't do any damage, but blink allows you to reposition quickly to get more auto attacks in. So I think that's worth considering. That and the Enchant Totem. And the Winter Wyvern Ultimate. So, that's roughly half of their tools. Like, of two heroes. Meaning one hero is essentially gonna deal the full damage. In other words, I'd honestly say, and I'm pretty good at this, good enough to be made a coach of, like, a tier 2 team. Even though that might just be because the manager of that team likes my casting. But um, anyways, you're gonna see Ace go down. Middle tower. Or not yet, middle not tower. yet, wait for it. There we go. That took a while. And the Monkey King hard carry, not allowed to have any fun. Kind of sad that he falls off so hard, so X has got to do all the carrying. I don't know, I mean, Monkey King save late, it's one of those things that really reminds me of Dota 1 and Dota 1, I'm not sure if, if a lot of you still remember. But there was a thing with Troll Warlord having four Skull Bashers. I shit you not, that actually worked. You had like a uh, 60, yeah, 66, 66 percent stun chance on melee attacks and like a 35 percent chance stun chance on ranged attacks. So you could just stun lock people permanently, even in ranged mode. It was so sick because the cooldown wasn't shared back in the day. Winter Wyvern now gonna get dropped down. So Nova pulling ahead once again, but the gold lead is just a very small one. Net worth jumping to and fro, up and down. I want a big team fight. I want to make some hype, guys. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And. Axe about to go down, just trying to get enough damage on it. Like, if he would have had one spin and a dunk on the Queen of Pain, the Queen of Pain would have probably picked out. But that means Spacey is gonna go down as well, and the gold lead goes back in favor of Danish Bear. Sadly, that takes a bit to update, but... Looks like this could be a really long game, which is great on the one side. On the other side, I'd really get to like to get some food Excellent. games. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Also, who the hell thought about putting my DPI button in the middle of the mouse? Like, you just saw my mouse going really slowly. This. Because I always play on max DPI. And the DPI button is all of a sudden in the middle of the mouse because Cor Corsair, my favorite brand still, they were like, hey guys, who needs a snipe button anyways? But um, let's talk about items. Let's actually talk about something somewhat related to the game.
Um, two veil of discord. What the hell? This is begging for a pipe. I mean, right now in Dota, spell damage is really good. A lot of spellcasters are extremely good heroes. Right now, I mean, their damage output is huge. They're extremely reliable. They don't need as much experience to start dealing damage right now. With a lot of spell, with a lot of spells dealing slightly more damage at level one. So, why aren't teams making the call here that spamming pipe nearly every game is a good call? I don't get it. Actually, since I coach team, I think I should spam them that after this game. But... Two veils of Discord, this is either because Danish Bears made a miscommunication or they're just planning to go for solo pickoffs, like Queen of Pain with the blink can of course, especially with Nyx's Assassin's Delphine in, go for easy, easy two-man pickups and talk about exactly that happening. That just happened onto the Monkey King. And now X in a lot of trouble as well. He decided to go for the Blade Mail right now. No pipe just yet and he's gonna drop as well. Like, maybe Chad thinks I'm a madman and obsessed with that item by now, but honestly, it's such a good item, I just... I can't put enough emphasis on it. Maybe the teams aren't seeing it. Maybe they're aware of it and just a little bit too greedy. I shouldn't be. A I shouldn't be allowed to judge, but I'm a caster, so I am. Since I personally always lay building items like my pipe a bit too much as well. But I kind of learned from losing three pups in a row. Chat's telling me to cheer to cheer Danish bears. Bottom tower but um, I'm not gonna be biased. I'm gonna remain unbiased here. It is then. I mean, right now this game is already in favor of Danish Bears, so I actually should be cheering for Nova if anything. Okay, and this is gonna be a dead end apparition. Danish bear, Danish bears fanboys giving. Danish bears fanboys giving Team DB their energy here. Meanwhile, Nova safely and Monkey King still not working out. Okay, I'm kind of sad now. I'm gonna be honest. This is making me a sad panda. Whoever made the call that Monkey King should build a Veil of Discord instead of X going for a pipe made me a really, really sad panda. Now X is going to drop down once again. Dead boys. And yeah, Chet, Chet's seeing it as well. Jet sees exactly what I'm seeing. The magic damage is just tearing Axe the second butthole. And that's gonna be a dead Monkey King. Well, Danish Bears fanboys, there you have it, the first significant lead in the game. And it's because of something I've been saying for two games. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think if Nova are gonna watch the like, are gonna watch my cast, they're gonna get really pissed at me for flaming them so hard for not building a pipe, but it's true, it's the legit reason they're losing this right now. Oh, and guess what? Troll Warlock went down as well! Two spell nukes! What a surprise. 747 actually going for an Orchid here. I mean, even he knows his team has like 95% magical damage, so... To mitigate that, you're gonna build a pipe to make more, to make more right clicks happen. That seems like a really good choice here as well. Meanwhile, Nova, Troll Warlord, gonna go for a Shadow Blade. That's gonna allow him to put to like red Dota a little bit harder. Make sure he's gonna get a recovery. And Nova, once again, very greedy with three cores and no defensive items. Those are like. There are two biggest mistakes here, and I know they're gonna realize it right after the game because I know how Dota works by now.
I actually have the privilege of listening in on a team during scrims and coaching a team. So I know often during a game you're all focused on winning fights. Guys, where should we fight? Should we smoke gang? Should we push? Etc. And then after the game, you just look at your items. And I know my camera works shitty. But thanks for pointing it out, chat. Uh, give me like three more days. Now nah, three more days. Give me three more days where we actually play and it should be on point again. It usually takes a while after each break, mainly because I'm still hang hung over from like partying in between casting times. But um, enough about that. Bottom tower just dropped down. Now the top tower is gonna get pushed as well. And top tower is gonna go down. Venomance actually securing the last hit. I think that was more coincidental than planned because he didn't like time the attack on any of his units. He tried to go for one time right click, missed that, just let the auto attacks do their thing, and it got him the last hit. Meanwhile, Axe teleporting out, it looks like Nova. They are realizing we can't be aggressive anymore. We need to split push and then all of a sudden run away like pussies. And I mean it works. A lot of teams are extremely reluctant when it, when it comes to running away, but it works so well. Monkey King, meanwhile, going for an interesting build. I wonder if he actually... I wonder if he actually tried that before. Echo Slam committed there, killing off Key. Noya went down to Spacey. Now has to Joe trying to get out of there, getting chased down. He is gonna drop, however, not before enabling a kill on Spacey there. Window Wave and Ultimate just gonna keep the two there, but no, Spacey is gonna get away. The Window Wave and Ultimate turns out to be a mistake here, and now Window Wave gets caught and goes down. That's a three for nothing, helping to equal out the game again, bit by bit. Also, chat, I'm not saying you need to pipe at 15 minutes. I'm saying that building a Hood of Defiance at 15 minutes would be a good call because it gives you more region for the laning stage. And then you can build into a pipe once this starts to happen. Because now Troll Ward is just gonna melt magic damage at this rate. I love that the game gives me a perfect example to make my point. And there we go, Monkey King Ultimate. He's gonna use his Hood of Divines to stay alive so his ultimate gets a couple more hits off. But it's not gonna enable any kills here. Everybody's taking low health. There is no Ice Blast available, even if Entered Apparition would go ahead and buy back there. Axe wasn't nearby to come in with a big call. So Danish Bears are gonna pull ahead even further. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Okay, so bot tier 2 is gonna get pushed down slowly now. 747s, uh, like I like his build. I like his choice to go for an early Orchid here. I mean, it's a pretty common item on Queen of Pain. And Shadow Blade as well, yeah. This guy has the right idea in mind. He's playing pretty much perfectly now. We're gonna see Monkey King trying to get out of there. He gets fissured up, gets warded up, and he is gonna drop. This is sad. Not only did I want Banana Slam and Jammer to have to admit that he's wrong, which is hilarious, because I don't know, I like the guy, I like his stream. It's actually high quality, unless he like really tilts. That's why I like to I like him being wrong, like. It's not like I want to flame the guy or anything. It's not like I want to be like, there you go, you're a freaking noob. It's just because he can't admit there, uh, when he's wrong. That's hilarious. But um, looks like Monk King safe lane. Not gonna work out that well. And 
Kai went down once again. Now it looks like X is going to drop to all the magic damage in the world here as well. Okay, Spacey now going to fall. And this is kind of funny because... Yeah, GG being called. Like, the series itself has been a uh, to and fro, like... The team's just trading game for game, but... Every game was pretty much a stomp. So, let me check the time real quick. Okay, guys, we got an hour before the next game, so the stream is gonna go down for nearly an hour. That way I can make myself some food. Thank you all for watching. Um, feel free to show our sponsors some love, because they're the only ones who make Tier 2 Dota possible. Of course, Smashcast and... Smashcast and Xbet. Xbet is great for those big betters of yours because they're a really legit site. Like, their customer support is on point. They might not have the best odds. At least a lot of people told me I don't know a lot about betting. I make a good, I make a good couple of right calls, but I'm too greedy for betting in general. I'm just too greedy. I see a team having, like, 99 to 1 odds and I actually bet an immortal or some shit. And then get really salty when I lose. But, yeah, they're actually really good when it comes to customer support and stuff. So even though the ads might, or the odds might not be the best, maybe show them some love. If you want to show me some love, I'm going to put my Twitter in the chat. With more Twitter followers, I, I actually get to cast bigger games. I'm really salty because I didn't get to participate in... Uh, Moonduck had the Caster's Crucible, that's what it's called. Where essentially casters were trying out and the best ones would get hired by Moonduck. But I... Like, and that's a problem because I have a real life job next to Dota. So I had to work while I wanted to try out for Moonduck exactly during that time. And it was so freaking sad because I think I would have done really well. So now I need, so now I need to sell out on the internet for a couple of Twitter followers, so... If you follow me, I'll suck your dick, you know? Okay, I might, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that. Forget about that. But, um, more Dota coming up in about an hour. Thank you all for watching. I'm gonna play some ads. And, um, peace out, guys.